Hello, in this video we're going to talk a little bit about some of the very earliest history of probability theory. Now, the idea of probability has been around a long time, really an unknown amount of time, because uh, games of chance have been around for a long time in dating and iniquity, antiquity. And some ideas about the relative likelihood of certain events in games of chance have certainly been known by gamblers as far back as we can measure time. But a systematic study of probability, a mathematical study, uh, didn't come about for quite a while. In 1526, Cardano wrote the book on games of chance, but was later published after his death. And it he had some correct ideas about some probability theory. He uh, correctly counted the number of different dice rolls. He understood some basic probability concepts as relative frequencies and the multiplication rule for independent events, but it was still a pretty uh, rudimentary introduction to the uh, idea of probability. Uh, also in the Middle Ages, Luca Pacioli and Tartaglia also investigated some basic probability questions. Um, but the modern probability theory is usually credited to say have started in the year 1654. And this was with an exchange of letters between Pierre de Fama and Blaise Pascal. And the way this came about was kind of interesting. There was a gambler. His name was Antoine, Antoine, or Antoine Gumbar Chevalier de Mer. So he was... Uh, the Chevalier de Mer, and de Mer wanted to improve his chances of winning in gambling, and he posed two questions to Pascal. The first one is, how many rolls of a pair of dice are necessary to get at least a 50% chan percent chance of rolling double sixes? And how should the stakes be distributed fairly if a game of chance is interrupted before its conclusion? Well, Pascal worked out some solutions to these and mailed them to his colleague and friend from Ma, and they discussed back and forth the answers to these two questions and some related ones in a series of letters that they exchanged. And this, uh, this series of letters is said to be the start of modern probability theory. They were able to correctly answer these two questions and other similar ones. By the way, the answer to the first one is 25, and then the second one's a little more complicated, depends on the um, what, what's going on in terms of the assumptions of the game. But the idea was to somehow uh, measure these different uh, settings. Now, I talked about Fermat a little bit in the last video, so let's talk just a little bit about Blaise Pascal. He was born in 1623, died in 1662, and uh, he was French, mathematician and philosopher. Some of the things that he worked on were conic sections. He also did experiments with atmospheric pressure uh, in 1648. And from that, he determined that the pressure got less and less as you increased in altitude. And he uh, surmised that once you got far enough out from the Earth that there was a vacuum. Um, the existence of a vacuum was denied by Descartes, so a little bit of conflict there between those two gentlemen. He did some work in projective geometry. He also did some early work in early computer science with the invention of one of the earliest mechanical calculators, the Pascaline, in 1645. Here's a picture of it in the lower left corner here. So this is basically a type of uh, mechanical adding machine or calculator. Um, and he did some work with, uh, well, his father in particular, I think, did some work with accounting. And uh, he made, did this to help with certain types of accounting calculations and other calculations. Unfortunately, it didn't really take off very much for him. It was not the first one. Uh, there's a guy named uh, Chicard who earlier made the first mechanical calculator in 1624. But this would be probably the second one to be made. A modern computer language called Pascal is named in his honor. He did some work in number theory. He did a lot of work with what he called the arithmetic triangle, or now known as Pascal's triangle. Now, we've already studied in these uh, videos and in our class that um, this triangle 
was known way, way, way before Pascal in multiple cultures, including going way back in China, for example. And uh, this is how he laid it out here. So this is an actual uh, uh, picture, basically, of uh, the triangle laid out and the way Pascal looked at it. We would probably maybe arrange it slightly differently today, but basically what you have here is you have ones across the first row and ones across the first column. And then to find any of the other cells, you could do it recursively by adding the value in the cell above and the cell to the left. So 1 plus 1 gives us the 2. And we get the 3 by adding the 1 and 2 here, and this 3 by adding that 2 and that 1 there. And so if you kind of go across a diagonal like this, these have become binomial coefficients, 1, 1, and 1. So that's, say, 1a plus 1b would be there, b a plus b the first. a plus b the second is 1a squared plus 2ab plus 1b uh, squared. And then, for example, uh, for third, you could go across this diagonal here to be the coefficients of a plus b cubed. So 1a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3a a b squared plus 1 b cubed and so forth and so that's one way that you can see and generate this tri this triangle recursively so these are these entries are called binomial coefficients because of what I just told you there about their coefficients from the expansion of a plus b to the n and they're also sometimes known as combinations because they are the number of ways of uh, choosing uh, k objects from a list of n objects where repetition is uh, not allowed and order does not matter. Uh, so these are uh, these can be thought of as those things as well. And so there's all kinds of interesting patterns and things here. And Pascal was able to examine and study a lot of these different patterns and was able to prove a lot of those, many of them using the principle of mathematical induction. And of course, he's in this particular uh, video because of his work with probability. So he did a lot of work with uh, probability. He tried to apply some probability type thinking to philosophy, uh, but then also, uh, you know, he helped found the, the, the uh, modern theory of probability. And I want to mention one more guy here, Christian Huygens. Uh, he was born in 1629 and died in 1695. He lived in the Netherlands, so he was a Dutch mathematician. And uh, probably uh, best known for his work with astronomy and some of his inventions. Uh, he was able to make several improved telescopes. And by having better instruments, he was able to make better uh, measurements and observations, and so he's able to accurately determine the shape of Saturn's rings. He was able to use his uh, inventions and his mathematical ability to understand the principle of a pendulum clock and build one. He experimented with spring brace clocks as well. He did work with mechanics, along with Hooke, Haley, and Wren helped formulate the inverse square law of gravitational attraction, and so of course that laid the foundation for some of Newton's later work. He was one of the teachers of Leibniz, who we're going to talk about uh, a little bit more as uh, one of the co-founders of calculus. And he started kind of as a follower of Descartes, but then ended up being a critic of Descartes. So he kind of changed his opinion about Descartes along the way. And of course, he's in this particular video because he did some work in probability as well. And he wrote the actually the first textbook on probability that was written in 1656. He actually proved 14 different propositions about probability, and he included some exercises, and those exercises among them were exercises about drawing colored balls from urns, and these are the same kind of exercises we use today to describe lots of probability situations, and so we will uh, see those in you know pretty much any kind of introductory uh, probability theory or any introductory probability text or class. So, uh, very important mathematician, astronomer, inventor, and wrote the first probability text.